probably the closest I ever came to death in a car deal. That's how we do it in the sound. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. First and foremost, before I forget, because I was actually supposed to mention this in the last video, and Jeff, the camera guy, just realized it. So, these are going to be available in the merch store. Signed RUC plates. You got to think about it. The only way to get one of these is there or spend a lot of money with me and buy a car that it's attached to. So, you know what? I thought we'd have a little fun with you guys. This is the very first one I signed top of the stack and we're going to mail it to one of you guys we want you to comment down below and tell us where you're from and your name we'll pick one at random and uh well tell us why you want this play what you're going to do with it hang it on the wall hang it on your car throw it in the trash whatever anyway we'll pick the one that catches our interest and we'll send this bad boy to you there you go thank you jeff Moving on, you know, speaking of car sales, you know, we sell a lot of collector cars here, and you know, that's what we do. And uh, something I kind of pride myself on is pretty good at it. You know, you gotta think, in the last, what, three years, we've sold about $4 million worth of cars out of this building. My accountant is literally going to shit a calculator when he hears that. But, it's a lot of, it's a lot of old cars. And uh, anyway, that being said, um, you know, you got to think, out of all these cars, I've only had one come back. You know, I don't build these things. You know, I try my best to buy the best I can. You got to think about their machines. They're made to break. So naturally, anything that I have or find wrong with them, you know, my guys drive them or I drive them or whatever, they'll send them to the shop. We'll have them fixed. You know what I'm saying? Have the problem addressed. Um Yes, part of the business. You know, they're not. I get some. I buy them, and they're they're perfect. They need to be you know washed and ready to go. You know, they're they're picture perfect. You got some that are need to be tweaked a little bit, and everybody's got their own idea of just right and and, and all that. And that's part of the business. Um, I sold a C ten truck a while back, and it's actually been several years back before we moved in this building. The only one I ever had come back. Um. You know, and I mean, I've sent cars all over the country. But, you know, I sold this guy this truck, and, and he, uh, it was so funny, his reasoning for why he didn't like it. Um, was all excited about it. You know, this, this, and this. And he said one funny line that sticks out in my head. And he said, my wife is going to kill me when she sees this. And, you know, of course, I followed up with a joke. It's a lot easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. And, you know, hey, you know, maybe she'll like it. You know, if not, you got a cool truck and got a hot date truck now. So throw that on your Tinder profile with your face pic. But um, so he buys a truck and we ship it out. And he gets it. Didn't hear anything out of him. You know, and some you do, some you don't. I mean, majority of them will get that text, man, hey, I love this thing, or hey, or this, this, and this, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I love hearing from everybody, you know, and, you know, I love it when people love their car, you know, or their purchase. And uh, this guy gets his truck, and I didn't hear a word. Well, I get a call from him about a week later, and he goes, my wife is livid. And I was like, well, bud, I mean, I mean, I hate that. I said, how about the truck? He said, well, it's cool. He said, I like it. But it really is a lot of money, and I probably shouldn't have bought it. And I'm thinking, well, it's not time to have buyer's remorse now. You know, I mean, it's, you know, you own it. And I said, you know, well, I hate that, you know. And I mean, you know, whatever. Can I get my money back? And I said, well, it don't exactly work like that. And you got to understand when you're in sales, you know, you're not in business or you're not going to be in business very long you know, who doing people, shitting people, whatever, you know? So I try to be straightforward and, and whatnot with everybody. And, and I said, well, why, why do you want it? I mean, just because your wife is mad at you for buying it. And he goes, well, he said, that's it. And he goes, you know, it's just, it's not comfortable, you know? And, and you tell he's just grabbing at straws at this point, you know? And, uh, 
nothing, you know, was a legit reason, you know. I mean, something bad on the truck or anything like nothing like that. He was like, well, is this? And, well, you know, and, you know, and I kind of want to do this. And, and I knew where this was headed. And, you know, and I said, well, I said, buddy, I said, I hate it. I really do. But I said, you know, I mean, you own it, you know. And I said, you know, you bought it, you know. And I said, if there was a legit reason behind this thing being not right, other than your wife not liking it, you know, no one twisted your arm to buy it, you know. And um, he's like, yeah, he said, I'm just, I'm just not happy with it. I'm just not happy with it. Well, that was that magic word, you know. I, I'm not, I would rather take one back than have that one person running their mouth saying they got took here. And, you know, and I, and, I, and I hate it. And like I said, I've never had to do it. And, and I haven't done it since then, which is a good thing. But I got the truck back. And this is where it gets funny. I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, if you'll pay to have the truck shipped to me, we'll inspect it and I'll refund your money. I will wire it right back to you just like you sent it to me. <clears throat> and I said, I'm not going to pay for shipping it back and all that stuff. He agreed. And, uh, so transport picks it up and they bring the truck back to me and I get it back a few days later and uh, the truck looked just like it did when I sold it to him, you know, it was in good shape, it wasn't anything like that. I'll be honest with you, I looked at the odometer, he's put like six miles on it. Well, no big deal, you know, hey, cleaned it up. I'll be honest with you, I posted a few pictures of it in my story feed back then and there was a guy in Iowa that saw it. He goes, man, that's a good looking C10. I'm like, hey, you know, he said, well, I've got a truck I want to trade. We ended up taking, doing a deal. So he was going to bring his truck to me and pick that truck up and take it back home to Iowa. Okay, well, that's a cool deal. Well, you know, this was at the old shop. So, and the, the problem with the old shop is all the cars, we had like two rows of cars and they were all the way down this long building. Well, you know, you got to move a lot of stuff around, shuffle things around. Well, this truck was kind of in the middle at that point. Well, this guy was going to get it. I said, well, we'll zip this thing around the block and just make sure everything's all right with it. Fired it right up and went to drive it out the block or drive it out the door. And one of my guys stops me. I'm like, whoa, 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 stop, stop. I'm like, what's going on? And the front wheel started coming off of this truck. Like you could see it had you know, mags on it and it actually pushed the center cap out just that little bit of distance and it pushed the center cap out and the wheel was coming off like the, the I mean, like, like working its way off. Um, and, and I mean, literally the only thing holding the wheel on at that point was the brake caliper and that little caliper bracket, you know, because I mean, like it was like the, 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 the actual brake rotor and everything was coming off. I'm like, holy shit, you know, damn, what's going on? So we literally jack it up right there, still in the shop. We jack it up right there and we pull the wheel off of it and uh, insert schematic here, Jeff. But basically, you know, these trucks have a spindle and on the end of that spindle, you know, you got the rotor, it goes over the end of it and you have an outer bearing, an inner bearing, and you have a washer, a nut, and a cotter pin that goes in. It's like a castle nut. And that cotter pin goes in and locks that that, that nut. And keep in mind that nut can't be tight because all it's doing is keeping a load on those bearings and keeping it together. And then of course that pin will keep that nut from backing back off. So that way you don't have to tighten it all the way down. And uh, cause if you tighten it all the way down, it burn the bearings up. Really simple design. I'll be honest with you. Cars to this day till they've went to, you know, hubs have all worked the same way, no matter what the make is. Well, anyway, what had happened was is the cotter pin was gone. Now, keep in mind, I drove this truck all over hill and half of Georgia when it was down here. And the wheel never came off. He drove it, we know, six miles, and the wheel didn't come off. So somewhere in between that and that, and keep in mind, you take that pin out, you're not going to drive it no ways before it starts trying to back off. And the thing is, it's not like the pin broke. It's not like it can't fall out. It's like, what happened? And all I could think about was that guy was so salty about this deal. I guess, you know, 
I guess if he couldn't have that truck, he didn't want nobody to have it. Like, like I'm like, how damn crazy is this? So we fixed it right quick. It was a super easy fix. You know, it didn't mess anything up. You know, thank goodness we caught it when we did. And um, we stuck it all back together and, and it was zipping around the block, make sure everything was great, make sure everything was tight like it was supposed to be. Got to inspect the truck, absolutely loved it. He was actually swapping trucks because the truck he was trading me was an AD body style truck. So it was a like a 48 53 Chevrolet truck. And uh, and he wanted a C10, a little bit bigger truck. It was actually for his son. His son's like 6'5", you know, big guy, big kid. And, uh, you know, this is a lot bigger cab in these trucks than those little AD trucks. And um, and they loved it, you know and I mean? You know, slick, lower down, big wheels, all that stuff. And they loved it, and we did the swap on it. And I just couldn't help but think about it. Like, like, I mean, how crazy is that? Somebody took that damn cotter pin out. There's no way possible that that, that pin just vanished. And there was no way it was never there because the wheel would have came off way before then. And, you know, all I could help but think about is that guy. And, you know, like, did he really do that? I mean, that could have been horrible. How about if it didn't come off when it did? Let's say we loaded that thing on a trailer right quick, and this guy sent his kid out riding 40 mile an hour down the road when the wheel comes off this thing. I mean, that would it would tear that truck all to hell. Hell, it could kill somebody. I don't know. I don't want to point no fingers, but it was definitely a weird situation all the way around, probably the closest I ever came to death in a car deal. And, uh, yeah, just goes to show you, one, Always check your wheel bearings. And two, always do the right thing. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. Yeah.